today. You ready to worship? We're all dressed the same. <laughs> We're even going to try to sing the same song at the same time. <laughs> Why don't we stand together and we'll just lift our voices in praise to the Lord.
me through the fire in darkest night. You were close like no other. Known you as a father. Known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. It's running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me.
Come on, put your hands together for the Lord today. Amen. This past week has been really crazy. But one night this week, Jenny and Josie and Jaxie, they were gone from the house, and it was just me and Gentry there. And I think that was this week, maybe the last week, sometime in the last four years. But it was just me and Gentry home, and, and it, was, it, was, it was starting to get dark, probably about 5.30 or so, starting to get dark. And, and I went outside, I had to go to the truck to get something, and, you know, and Gentry's inside, and she's on the couch watching TV. And, and I go outside, and when I'm outside, one of the neighbors is, is coming up, and so me and him, we're sitting there talking. We sit out there talking for probably about half an hour. And then all of a sudden, Gentry just busts through the front door. I mean, just comes out, out the front door from the inside to the outside, and there's this panic look on her face, like, where, where is everybody? You know, like she missed the rapture, you know. And so she, kind of, she just busts out the front door, and the, the moment that she walks around the corner of the porch and she looks off to, to, to the right and she sees me and this gentleman standing there, it's just like, ah, just this calm come on her, like, oh, there's my daddy, Right? There's, there, I'm, I'm not alone, there's someone, but that, that original freak out moment, where'd everybody go, right? That's why we're here this morning. We're here because there were things going on maybe in our heart or in our life, maybe just, maybe it's not us personally, but things going on in the world. Come on, I'm challenging you, step out on the porch, look and see your daddy this morning. Look, and you, you will see the presence of, and you will feel the presence of your Father, and you'll have calm, and you'll have peace, and you'll have joy, and you'll know that your Father is watching over you today. Amen? Amen. Have peace. Have joy. Have, this is the season for peace and joy and love. This, yeah. Football season's over. basketball <laughs> it's over but that much <laughs> well, we're moving on and we're glad you're here with us this morning welcome to Elm Grove God is a mender of the broken hearts and I know I'm broken hearted this morning I'm broken hearted and so he's a mender of broken hearts hey we're glad you're here with us this morning welcome to Elm Grove welcome to the country it is Christmas in the country Sunday and we're excited about today excited about today so, amen. Hey, before we go any further, I want to do something real quick. They're back in kids' church, but I asked Miss Betty if she would to come up. Where's, do you have the handheld? Where's the, there it is. There's the handheld. Caitlin stole it. Nah. She has something she wants to present. Good morning. So, I want to honor this young man right here. He did not want to get up here and show his face to Buddy. But at the beginning of the quarter in Sunday school, I set forth a challenge for my kiddos in there, and that was whoever memorized all of the memory verses for the quarter and had perfect attendance would win a Bible. And Mr. Tristan Fritz here won the Bible. He worked very hard for the entire quarter to memorize all of his memory verses. He was so excited that he would get ahead of himself and try to do the memory verse first instead of hearing the lesson first, but he did an awesome job. Yeah. And here's your little Bible. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Tristan, anything you want to say, man? You want to give a shout out? We're on Facebook Live right now. You want to shout out to your mom? Your girlfriend? <laughs> no, you don't want to shout her out, do you? <laughs> We're, man, this is exciting. We're excited. This is, and if you flip through this Bible, this is a cool, cool Bible. Like this is, It's called the Junior Adventures Bible, and it's got some cool stuff in it for kids. One of the coolest Bibles I've seen for kids, and so this is awesome. So Tristan, congratulations, man. We're proud of you. We're so proud of you. Keep it up. Keep it up. Amen. Amen. And Miss Betty, thank you so much for all your investment in our kids. They're back in kids' church right now. And so, but hey, thanks for taking a pause and coming out here and joining us today. All right? Appreciate you, man. Can I give you a hug? Is that cool? I didn't, I didn't know if men hug or not. I just, I'm just asking. So, all right. 
All right. Hey, love you, buddy. Thank you, Betty, so much. Give him another round of applause real quick. Amen. Hey, remember this morning as we uh, turn and we greet one another, remember the offering receptacles are located on either side of the media center. You can drop your tithe and offering in those receptacles. Also, if you're watching online through Facebook, you can go to elmgrovecc.org and you can give through that. And we greatly appreciate your giving. We're going to talk a little bit more about that here in just a few moments. But this time, turn around, greet some people, find someone you don't know, let them know you're glad to see them here today. said that this baby boy, no family of promotion, no city of impressive nature, just a manger, no social media campaigns, no presidential campaigns, no private airplanes, but he rose up with All right, well, once again, we want to welcome you to Elm Grove today. Excited about today. Big day across our church. Looking forward to an incredible day together. A lot of work to be done this afternoon, then a lot of festivities to happen tonight. And so, 
We'll get into that here in just a second. First of all, put your hands together and show some love to Joy and Ron. They took care of our breakfast this morning, our grab-and-go breakfast. So thankful for them this morning. Appreciate them. Hey, these next couple of Wednesday nights, remember our Wednesday night ministry? We got two more Wednesdays before Christmas. And so, uh, man, this past Wednesday, enjoyed the parade in town. And so, but we got two Wednesdays leading up to Christmas. And so, uh, um, we'll be here these next two Wednesdays with kids ministry, youth ministry, and our adult Bible study on Wednesday night. So, looking forward to that. Looking forward to getting our kids back and our youth back and seeing seeing them again. Um, Also, remember, through the month of December, it's our Christmas Bible reading challenge. We're reading the book of Luke. We start, we have one chapter a day. You start with Luke chapter 1 on December the 1st, and you read one chapter a day. And that'll take you all the way to Christmas, uh, Christmas Eve, actually. You'll wrap it up on December the 24th. There's 24 chapters in Luke. Then you'll wake up on Christmas morning. you know exactly the story of Jesus and all, all about his life. And so join us on that Christmas reading challenge. If you haven't heard it before, maybe you just flat forgot, it's only December 5th. So you can catch right up, and you can do it, and you can be right there with us. So uh, looking forward to that. Hey, this Tuesday is also Taco Tuesday. It's the first Tuesday of the month. So it's Taco Tuesday at the Rock for our Ceiling sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Uh, and so we invite them to come to the Rock and enjoy all you can eat tacos and desserts. So that's this this Sunday. And I'm not asking anyone for dessert. We will take care of it. Okay, everybody, just relax. I, I, you guys have put in the work. You have put in, and you deserve to have a few days off and just relax. It has been crazy around here, and all the things that this church has done over the last couple of weeks. You, you guys deserve so much, this and so much more. And so, um, so no one bring desserts all for Tuesday. We got it covered. We'll get it taken care of. And um, I'm talking to my but He's a real good buddy of mine. He makes great desserts down the city. His name's Sam. Okay? And so we're, we're going to be just fine. So all good. All good. Also, Thursday night is senior game night. And so if you are in that senior adult group and at The Rock, that starts at 6 o'clock. Pastor Barry and Barbara, our senior adult ministers, they lead that. And so come and be a part of that. They have all kinds of fun, a lot of good fellowship, a lot of good laughs, and a lot of good food. So that's this Thursday night at 6 o'clock at The Rock. Okay. Um, the big thing today. Today is a huge day. Christmas in the country. We have our biggest registration that we've ever had for our kids this year. This is our 25th anniversary. You've heard me say it time and time again over the last few weeks, couple months. This is our 25th year anniversary. Pastor Orville began this back in 1996. And so 25 years of Christmas in the country. And this year, our biggest registration yet. As of, as of this morning, we had a few more additions. We got 198 kids registered for tonight. And so we're looking, and we always have extras that show. And so uh, by the end of the tonight, I expect to be well over the 200 mark with kids. We'll be feeding them and their families, switching some things up just a little bit. We have all kinds of outdoor activities for tonight. Starts at 6 o'clock, by the way. Starts at 6 o'clock. If you are working tonight, we'll have a meeting at 5 o'clock back in the fellowship hall just to go over everything. And so make sure everybody kind of understands their role and uh, understands how the night will run. But uh, so at 5 o'clock's the meeting. Everything kicks off at 6 o'clock. And 6 o'clock, we'll have outdoor activities. And they'll all be over here on this east side. Uh, and so over toward the northeast corner, there's going to be a couple of inflatables. There's going to be an inflatable obstacle course and a huge bouncy house. Um, you're going to see uh, uh, right here in this area, right here uh, by, by staff parking area, we're turning that. That's going to be a bunch of fire pits. And so we're going to have s'mores stations over here where families can come and make s'mores together. Now right now we have five or six fire pits out here, and so we'll have those set up and going. And we got the long rows. We, we just expect them to take a marshmallow and just hold it. And just, <laughs> so <laughs> where's your faith at, little boy, you know? No, we got, the, we got three foot roasting sticks for, for every kid and for every family. We got plenty of those, and, and so uh, we're looking forward to that. Um, we're going to have all kinds of characters walking around for photo ops and pictures. Um, and, and there's other things I'm just not thinking in my head right now, but there's, there's other things uh, that will be going on outdoors as well, all kinds of events for the kids. There's hay rides. There will be hay rides and train rides here tonight. And uh, uh, just a lot of fun. So it's an outdoor 
night. Um, and it's supposed to be beautiful tonight as far as temperature. We've been, we've been holding our breath, crossing our fingers, and saying our prayers, and giving a little more in the offering, right? We're believing for a great night tonight. We know there's a, there's a front coming through. It depends on who you watch. Some say between 7 and 8. Some say between 8 and 9. And some say after 10 o'clock. And so, but, so we're going with the after 10. Our event should be through well before then. And so, but we're looking forward to just an incredible, an incredible night. Uh, we know it'll be beautiful temperature. We're looking forward to no wind and just having a great night together. Amen? Then the thing that's changed here in our community uh, I know many of you have already heard, uh, uh, honored to have Brandy, one of our physicians in our community, here with us this morning as well. And, and, uh, but w- one thing, we've had an uptick of sickness in our community. And so after talking to, to a lot of our medical professionals and our community leaders, we decided it's in the best interest of tonight not to cram. We're, we're talking 450 people plus when, by the time we get all the kids and parents and their older siblings. So not to cram everybody into the fellowship hall tonight. That wouldn't be the wisest thing. And so um, I've got great peace on this. I've, I've got more peace on this than I had probably any decision we made during the last year and a half, and, and um, so what we'll do is when they are done with all the outdoor activities, they'll come around to the, f- to the front, we'll have the front decorated nice and pretty there on the lawn, there on the northwest corner, and so they'll come around the front, and we'll have people there to help them, and we'll get to go meals, we still have the meals, we still have the food, we have barbecue, we got our barbecue ribs, we got beans, we got coleslaw, we got potato salad and homemade cornbread and homemade desserts, it's going to be an incredible meal, but it'll just be in a to-go box. And so if they want to take that and go home and eat, or if they just want to have a seat on the front yard and sit and eat here, that's cool too. But um, that's how we're going to do that. We're just going to keep everyone well. We're going to do our part to keep our community moving forward and um, to keep our community safe and healthy. Amen? Amen. Amen. Brandy, I know it's a busy time for you. I want to say thank you so much. Can we, you all put your hands together for Brandy helping us out. So, Amen. We want everyone to get to Christmas well and beyond too, and beyond, but we want to celebrate an incredible Christmas together. Amen? Amen. So that's kind of the game plan for tonight. Everything outside, outdoors, still a go as usual. We've been, we've been advised that's still good. Go ahead and do that. And so just to switch up on the inside, and uh, we'll, we'll, it's going to be a great, great time. So looking forward, looking forward to tonight. Looking forward to it. Amen. Let me see if I'm missing anything else. Immediately following church, um, those who want to stick around and help out, we'll have lunch prepared. Um, I got another buddy. His name's Dizo, and um, great Italian man. And uh, so he's going to be preparing some food for us, and uh, and so we'll have that in the in the back. And and so we'll be sticking around right after church to get things ready for tonight. Um, we have, and, and so let's 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 just talk about tonight. All right. Um, Mutes for just a second, right here.
is going to be here tonight. I heard he's flying in right now. Flying in, should have flew in yesterday and landed in, in Dallas and did something magical down there. Move a pylon about that far. That's all we needed, Santa. Move the pylon that far. Twice. Twice. But I'm over it. We were here last night and someone said, is it going to be hellfire and brimstone tomorrow? Now, you better believe it is. We're roasting bear. It's good. It's good. Life's bigger than football. Amen. I'm still, I'm saying it by faith. Life's bigger than football. And so, good night, a good night, a good time. So, hey, look at your neighbor and say, it's going to be a good day. going to be a good day, all right? Today, we pause. We pause every Sunday. And this is something we started here about a month, month and a half ago, and and we want to be a church, a church of honor. We've talked about this so many times in the last couple of months. We want to be a church of honor. And, we, and it's not just showing honor to leadership. It's about leadership honoring, honoring those who are part of the family. And so every Sunday we pause and we say thank you to someone in the family who has went above and beyond and just expresses great love and, and great care for the church and the church family, and we're so thankful for that. And we've done, we've, 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 we've done all age groups. We've done kids, and we've done uh, older kids, right? We, we, we've done all age groups, and we all, because we're going we're to honor everyone that walks through these doors. We're going to show honor, and uh, God blesses that. This morning, I want to pause, and there's someone in here who, who goes above and beyond and has for so, so many years. Uh, this person does, does things that takes a huge weight off the pastor's shoulder. I know when Pastor Orville was here, a great friend of Pastor Orville and a great friend to me as well, does a lot to take the weight off, of, uh, off the pastor and does a lot of just, just running and getting and grabbing and making sure things are good to go here at the church and as far as our stock and uh, all of our stuff that we need to have dinners and to have meals. And this person puts lots of time and lots of effort and lots of energy, and we're so thankful for, for him. So now we're narrowing it down. So thankful for him and his investment. So thankful for the gift that God has given him. And just so thankful for everything that he does here for the church family. On Wednesday nights, he likes to cook for our kids out here. Are we narrowing it down anymore? He does a great job of taking care of food for our kids. He does a great job of taking care of uh, a big portion of rib dinners and making sure we're ready to go. And, and uh, in fact, he was here early this morning getting roasters on, getting ribs on, making sure we're ready to go for this evening. And we're so thankful for him, so thankful for the blessing that he is. He does so much more than what we're giving him credit for and invests so much time. And it's the time. All day trips to Oklahoma City. And he'll go to two or three Sam's and two or three Walmarts in one trip just to make sure we have what we need to do the next dinner. And he's an incredible man, and we're so honored to have Bill Morgan as a part of our church family. I love you, buddy. You do. You do. You do. So, yeah, we're going to get a picture. Joe, hop in there. It makes us look better. All right. All right. Appreciate you. Appreciate you so much. Appreciate you. Amen. God's good, isn't he? God's good. Again, so honored. So honored to have you with us this morning. Again, welcome. Exciting day. Exciting day ahead. I think I've been through all the announcements. Want to make sure. Read my notes one more time. All right. Awesome. Awesome. So, hey, if you have any questions about tonight, be sure and get with me after service and and we'll get things lined up and, and uh, just looking forward to an incredible, incredible night. And if you're here and you're like, is there a place for me to help? You bet there is. Come talk to me. We'll make sure you have a place. Uh, man, we're just looking forward to, a, to an incredible night here this evening. Amen. Amen. Hey, we've been in this series on the Lord's Prayer. Do you, do you know it yet? You know it? Do you know it, King James or NIV? Yeah, King James. Let's say it King James together, all right? Are you ready? 
Let's do it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our as we forgive those who that's hard for me to say and lead us not into but deliver us from for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen tonight or this morning we wrap up this series and it's a great way to lead into our Christmas season because we're on the last line For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Or if you're reading it from the New King James, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have all, as we talk about this, we've all been to uh, and participated in celebrative moments of touchdowns scored by the home team or when you're watching the big game and the game is over, you see the rise of joy that's on the field as the winning team is able to hoist the trophy. If you're watching a baseball game, you anybody watch a baseball game and it's the bottom of the ninth inning and the score's tied and then someone hits a home run and as the guy makes his way around the bases, he come around from third base to home and his team's right is waiting right there for him as he hits home base. And there's been some instances where he never touched home base. And, and you know, and it, it's been uh, uh, sports not so greatest moments. And so, but, you know, just that excitement, that celebration that breaks out over what happened, it's spontaneous. You, you can't help it. Last weekend on Saturday night, me, the team I'm pulling for, there was great spontaneous celebration. There was so much that I think I bruised my daughter's leg because my daughter was sitting beside the the, uh, sitting beside the couch watching the game, and, and whenever we made that final tackle, and I went, yes, yes, and I hit her leg twice, just bam, bam, and she goes, ow, oh, dad, and I was like, I'm sorry, and, uh, but it was just, you know, it's just spontaneous celebration. You can't help it. I haven't felt that way in years, you know, and so I had to, and just spot, and then yesterday, not so much. Right? Yesterday, it's the same hit, but it's no, no! Right? Spont- and so it's that spontaneous celebration that busts out. Maybe your game's basketball. You see a player hit a shot at the end of the buzzer, and as the buzzer's going off, the shot falls through, and the emotion that wells up in the, in the crowd as the team, as you just watch what happened. It's funny to me watching baseball because I love baseball. And it's funny it, to me. It's, Jenny has commented on this several times as we're watching baseball together. I love to watch Kansas City Royals. That, that's my team. And, and it's funny. It's fun to watch them and and. Because when they win, especially when, back in 2015, 16, we're making it to the World Series, and we won the World Series one of those years. And as we won the World Series, to watch 20, 30, and some 40-year-old men out on a baseball field jumping up and down like, like third graders. You know, you know what I'm talking about? And so it's fun, and now you're just watching these men, and they're just they're excited. And it's just that exuberance, that celebration. In other words, in moments like that, you don't have to beg for praise. Come on. In moments like that, you don't have to beg for praise. It's moments like that, you don't have to shove people into celebration. It's the natural feeling of the moment that just demands it, and you can't help it. You know, the Bible's full of those moments. The Bible's full of those moments. How many of you have ever heard the word doxology? Okay. In the back of the hymn book, several hymn books, there's the doxology. It's a hymn. And if you've ever got that, you went, what in the world, doxology? Well, let me break it down for you. Doxology is two Greek words put together. And one of the Greek words means it's doxa, and it means praise. And the other Greek word is uh, logos, and it means expression. Okay, so a doxology is an expression of praise. Okay, it's an expression of praise. There are many doxologies in the Bible. And, but there are, there are many spontaneous eruptions and recognition and celebration 
of God for who he is and what he has done. It's a volcanic eruption of the soul. In fact, I bet if you go back and you remember maybe things that God has done in your life, can you remember a time when maybe he healed you or maybe he, he helped you or maybe he answered a prayer or maybe he came through with a financial blessing you were waiting on the check or you were waiting on the payment then all of a sudden it just shows up in your, in your account or it shows up in, in your post office you know, and, and you open it up and it's there. I, I bet there's a doxology, come on, that goes out from your heart. You're like, yes, this is it. Or, you know, or when you got down on one knee and you were shaking and quivering and shivering because you didn't know if she was going to say yes or not. And you got down on one knee and you said, Jenny, I said, Jenny, you don't say Jenny, I said, Jenny. I said, Jenny, would you marry me? And she said, yes, it was a doxology. Yes! Right? An eruption because I knew I had to get her married before she had LASIK surgery and could see better. A doxology. And got her to the altar quick. A doxology. It's legitimate emotion. You responded to something or someone for who they are and what you, or maybe what you just saw them do. And it's Jesus' understanding that when he concludes the Lord's Prayer, that if you really understood what he just said, there would be an eruption of your soul. There would be a doxological response. Okay? When you understand what kind of name he has, and that it ought to be hallowed, hallowed be your name. When you understand the kingdom that he oversees and it ought to be submitted to, when you understand the perfection of his will to carry out his purposes, your kingdom come, your will be done. When you understand that nothing you have or will have could ever come to you if he wasn't the source of getting it to you. And so you praise him for your daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. If you really understood what it means to be a forgiving person and to be a forgiver and for letting someone off the hook because you know your God let you off the hook and you forgive And you forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Or forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. If you really understood how bad Satan was out to get you. And so that God would have to lead you or deliver you out of the evil one's snares. That maybe he's already trapped you in. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. It's Jesus' understanding that if you understood that. And you understood everything he's talking about here in the Lord's Prayer. That there would be a doxological response. There would be something welling up in your soul of praise. And Jesus closes out the Lord's Prayer with this, with the most famous doxology known to man. And he says this, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And he says, he starts off with this word for. For. In other words, in light of everything I just taught you to pray, you ought to be excited now. Jesus says, in light of everything I just told you, The disciples said, Jesus, teach us to pray. They had watched Jesus pray. They saw how Jesus prayed. They wanted to pray like that. When Jesus prayed, things happened, didn't it? And they said, we want to pray like that. And Jesus, they said, Jesus, teach us to pray. And Jesus began teaching them to pray. And he, he taught them the Lord's Prayer. And then when he gets to the end, in light of everything I've just taught you about the Lord's Prayer, you ought to be motivated to give your God what he deserves. For yours is the kingdom, and yours is the power, and yours is the glory forever, amen. It's about you, God. It's about your name. It's about your kingdom. It's about your will. It's about your provision. It's about your forgiveness. It's about your protection, God. This whole thing's about you. It's about you. Now, I'm a beneficiary. Praise God. I get to benefit from what, who God is and what God does. Just like every third Friday night. There's some amazing cooks in this house. In our community, including myself, we get to benefit from the talents and gifts and abilities that God has blessed some amazing people in here with. We're the beneficiaries. And just like this, we're the beneficiaries. And so let's start here. Don't start by making prayer about you. Make it about him. Make it about him. Let it boomerang back to you. If you make it about you and you forget about him and you flip places with him in prayer, you made prayer about you. And not about who he is, not about what he can do. And I don't know about you, but I can't help me. (laughs) That's why I'm going in prayer. I can't help me, but he can. And first of all, he says, I'm going to praise him for his kingdom. For yours is the kingdom. Someone say kingdom. This is the second time the word kingdom is used in the prayer. 
He said before, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And now he says, for yours is the kingdom. We explained the kingdom when we talked about it before. The kingdom is the rule of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 26 says this, both heaven and earth belong to God. You're the ruler. God, you're the one in charge. The problem is we have too many of God's people who like to switch kingdoms. Look at your neighbor and say, I know he's not talking about you. He's talking about the guy behind us. No. Nah. I know he's not talking, you know, but we have too many people in America who like to switch, switch kingdoms. They wear a uniform of God's kingdom, but you find them living in another kingdom. Oh, come on. And so as a result, they're living in a kingdom and they're living in conflict. And I'll be honest, there's times I've lived in conflict in my life, and it's not fun to live in conflict. It's not fun to wear the uniform of one, but try to live in the grace of another. It doesn't work. And so let me help you. If you don't recognize God as your king, not only in what you say, but how you function, then we've jeopardized the rest of the Lord's prayer. We've jeopardized the Lord's prayer. For the Lord's prayer only works if his kingdom is your concern. But if you're concerned about your rule or your management or your status or your position and you're not under the king but you want the king to be under you and do what you want, then we've jeopardized the rest of the prayer. Why? Because it's not my kingdom, for yours is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. Is this making any sense? All right, if it doesn't, hang on. He's allowed to rule. And then if he's allowed to rule, he controls the outcome. If I'm rule, I control the outcome. How great is that? But if God rules, God controls the outcome. Remember, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So if your will is done, the outcome is tied to, your, to his rule. And so if you choose to leave his rule, you've jeopardized your outcome. If he knows you're not going to do his thing, and he knows he can't trust you to keep the kingdom going, and then he says this, he says, thy power. Thine is the kingdom and thine is the power. And here's what, what's happening across our world today. A lot of people are giving God position, but they're not giving him power. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, this is good. We're giving him position, but we're not giving him power. And so we'll worship, and we'll raise our hand, and we'll shout hallelujah, and we'll jump a pew or two. But then, come on, but there's no power. We don't see God doing anything in our life. We don't see God changing anything, turning anything around, because we hold him in high position, but we don't hold him in high power. And see, the only way to get into the high power is if he knows you're subjected to the kingdom. So why don't we see more of his power? Because a lot of times we're not submitted to his kingdom. It's getting quiet. I thought this was Christmas in the country. This is supposed to be a celebration. We're going to get there. I promise it's going to end good. We're going to have fun at the end, but hang on. If we don't have access to his power, we won't see him working in our life, even though we hold him in high position. You know, it's easy to go around saying, God is first in my life. That's great talk, it's great speech, but is there great submission and great relationship? That's what he's saying here. For thine is the kingdom, and thine is the power and glory forever. Amen. Everybody good? You can hear them Christmas crickets going right now, can't you? I saw in Fear Factor where you, if you dip them in chocolate, they're not that bad. I've never tried it. Maybe you have. For thine is the kingdom and thine is the power and thine is the glory forever. And then he says this, that word glory, the glory. Let's talk about this. It means to put something on display, to highlight it, to advertise it. Glory means to show something off. For thine is the glory. Let me explain. Men have what we call ascribed glory. Okay, um, we have a scribe glory, glory that we attribute to people because of who they are, or because of what they have achieved. And so you go into a courtroom, and a man or woman comes out and sits on a, on a bench in a robe. How do you respond to that person? Your honor, right? Your honor. Now, not too long ago, I was sitting in a courtroom, and as I'm sitting there, it's, it was interesting watching people, because you could tell the ones that are there all the time. Because they'll call their name and they go up and they stand there and say, what's up, judge? 
You know, and, I, and if that was me, I'd be like, yeah, like, please don't kill me. But they just go out and they're just like, how's it going, judge, you know. But you're supposed to be your honor, right? You go up, so there's an ascribed, it's an ascribed glory. It's an ascribed glory. So you go up and if it's a guy, you know, a guy pulls you over. He's got lights behind you. He pulls you over. What's your response? What are you doing here? That's not a good response, is it? You're going to end up on an episode of Cops. The right response is, yes, officer, right? And so you talk, it's an ascribed glory. Everybody, everybody with me so far? The uniform represents a position or, or authority under the law. And so we ascribe glory to that man or woman uh, because of the, the uniform and because of the law in which they serve, the authority they're under. Now you take the robe off the man, you take the, 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 uh, the outfit off the woman, you put them in regular street clothes, they're just another man or woman. It's the attire that you ascribe the glory to. That's called ascribed glory. Judges get locked up sometimes, police get fired sometimes, because if they don't do what their job says, they jeopardize what they were ascribed to do. Come on, someone. Ascribed glory. That's ascribed glory. We attribute it to a person based on what they've accomplished, and it's temporary. But God has an intrinsic glory. An intrinsic glory, let me explain. What wet is to water, what hot is to fire, what blue is to sky. That's intrinsic glory. In other words, you can't separate it. You can't separate it. God's glory is so intrinsic that if no one else ever glorifies him and no one has or ever will glorify him, he can glorify himself all day long and still be fine with it because his glory is intrinsic to his being. Mm. Now the scripture says that we were created for his glory in Isaiah chapter 43. And then you need to know, you are going to glorify God. Everyone in here. Will glor- and everyone watching in Facebook land, you will glorify God. Everyone will glorify God at some point in time in their life. Every person will. One way or another, everyone's going to glorify God. And you can glorify him in one or two ways, voluntarily or mandatorily. That kind of sounds like my mom and her, her discipline methods. My, but voluntarily or mandatorily. Because everyone is going to glorify the name of Jesus. The Bible says every knee will bow and every tongue will confess, even Oprah, that Jesus Christ is Lord. (laughs) Right? Every knee. Even the person you're thinking, now know about them, yeah, they're going to do it. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Right now, we have the opportunity to do it voluntarily. Coming up, there will be a moment where it won't be voluntarily, it will be mandatorily. I want to do it voluntarily. I want to know him right now as Lord, as King, and as Savior. Coming one day soon, he will be known as Judge. I'd rather know him as Lord and Savior. Come on, someone. Everyone's going to do it. But here's what you got to do, and here's what I got to do. We must be to God what the moon is to the sun. The moon reflects the light of the sun on the earth. And so light hits it, but the moon can't keep it. The moon has to pass it to the planet, earth, because it has no light of its own. You give me glory, and I, if I own it and don't reflect it, then I'm sharing, then, I'm, then, then, then it's my glory, and that, that's it. But if I, if, if my job when I'm hit with glory is to reflect it back to the one who ascribed, the one who gave me the glory, the one who is the source of the glory, and who's the source of the glory, the glorious one himself. Does this make any sense? And that's why, you know, when you watch, nah, I'm not going to get into that. Moving on. Here in America, and I'm, 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 I'm about to wrap up. But you all know I have 30-minute closings. <laughs> Here in America, um, sometimes I feel like we, we've made God too small. That, that, that's why the Lord's Prayer is designed for you to magnify him. There are two ways to make something bigger. To make something bigger, you either magnify it or you get closer to it, okay? You magnify it or you get closer to it. 
And when you do those two things, he gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, he don't actually get bigger, but your understanding and knowledge and cooperation with him does. It's, it's you. It's your reflection. And so he gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And the bigger he gets, the more praise you're going to give. The folk who really praise God are the folk who know just how big he really is. And then he says, here in this other thing, he says, Zion is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. And that word forever means there's no end in sight. And so just as I break this down this morning, let's understand what's going to happen when we die since it's forever. Kingdom and power and glory forever. 100 quadzillion years from now, we're going to be learning new things about God's kingdom, about God's power, and about God's glory. Because he says it goes on forever. And so guess what we're supposed to do now? We're supposed to be practicing. Practicing praising his kingdom, practicing praising his power, and practice praising his glory and giving him praise. When the president goes somewhere, that place that he goes shifts everything to facilitate facilitate his presence because of his position, because of his power, and because of his status. I remember growing up, me and my mom and dad, we went to San Antonio, Texas, and we were at the, at the Alamo, touring the Alamo, and as we were there, this big line of cars, you know, black, blacked out windows and uh, black SUVs rolls up, and, and we're, we're standing probably out here to where the sound booth is. I mean, they didn't really make us get back a whole lot, but, but we're sitting here, and we're over on, on, this, on the side of the Alamo, and and this whole line of cars shows up, and then all of a sudden, out steps a guy by the name of President Bill Clinton. And whenever he steps out, things changed. Men were in position. They were probably afraid of my dad. Because <laughs> I remember my dad saying, let's go. <laughs> I was like, Dad, that's... You don't get to see the present every day. Let's go. <laughs> yes, I'll remember the Alamo. <laughs> I thought it was kind of neat just to see the president. My dad was not impressed. <laughs> Let's go. But when, when he stepped out, like things changed. They had roads blocked off. They had, you know, systems in place. They facilitated because of his power, his position, and his status. Now, if we can do that for someone who's here today and gone tomorrow, who doesn't give me food to eat, doesn't give me a place to live, doesn't give me air for my lugs, and doesn't answer my prayer, if I can do that for a man, what should I do for the King of kings and Lord of lords? So watch this now as we close. Barbara Barry, you guys go ahead. Goodness of God, can you get that, that ready? Bethany, can you go ahead and come up? Caitlin, if you want, Dolores, there you are. Go ahead and come up. Let's go into the goodness of God. As as we close here, I want you to think about the end of this prayer. The prayer ends with the word amen. And that word amen means so be it. That word amen means I got it. That word amen means... That's what I'm talking about, you know. Amen means affirmation on what's just said. And so don't say amen unless we're going to hallow his name. Don't say amen unless we're going to submit to his kingdom and do his will. Don't say amen unless you're going to look at him for a provider. Don't say amen unless you're willing to forgive so that you can be forgiven. Don't say amen if you're not going to let him control what the devil does in your life. Don't say amen, just say, I'm finished. Don't say amen, because once you say amen, it means I agree with you, I'm on board with you, you can bank on me, I'm all in. That's what it means. And this morning, God in our world is looking for some amen saints. He's looking for some that when they wake up tomorrow, God, I'm going to bless you because you got me out of bed this morning. He's looking for some who, when the Bible says, from the rising of the sun till the going down the same, let the name of the Lord be praised. When a football player makes a great play, they walk around, you know, and if you watch college football or pro football, they'll make a sack or they'll do something and they'll they'll raise the roof, right? That's what this is. They're raising the roof. You know what they're saying is, join me in glory for what I just did, right? 
join me. Come on, give me props for what I just did. Did you see that tackle? Did you see that pass? Did you see that catch? Give, come on, give me glory for what I just did. And God's looking for some people in the church who will raise the roof and say, God, I'm going to give you glory. I'm going to give you glory for what you've done in my life. I'm going to give you glory for saving my soul. I'm going to give you glory for healing my body. I'm going to give you glory for restoring my marriage. I'm going to give you glory for saving my kids. I'm going to give you glory, God. I'm going to give you glory in this house. And so God's looking for a church. He's looking for some people who will bless his name, who will glorify his name, who will exalt his name together. Come on, we're going to be in that place where we walk in. We're going to give him glory. We're going to give him glory. God's looking for some folk who will give it up, who will give up some worship, who will give up some praise. You can't praise in silence. Now, you can worship in silence. But you can't praise in silence. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Not think so, not hope so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. When I'm healthy, I'm going to praise him. When I'm sick, I'm going to praise him. When I'm needy, I'm going to praise him. When I'm hungry, I'm going to praise him. When my belly's full, I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him when I lay down. I'm going to praise him when I get up. Why? Because I'm redeemed and I'm going to say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We're going to praise his name out loud, outspoken. Everyone else in this world is going crazy with their mouth. It's time the church opens hers and does the same. Yes. Now you're thinking, he's about to pass out. Yes, I am. We're going to say so. We're going to say so. We're going to say so to our community. We're going to say so to our area. We're going to speak up and we're going to say so. We're going to be the redeemed of the Lord and we're going to pray our praise that's going to come from our mouth. We're not going to praise in quiet. You can't praise in quiet. It's an oxymoron, like fit Jared. It's an oxymoron. We're going to let the real, come on. Everybody get what I'm saying? We're going to praise. We're going to praise. We walk in this place, we're going to praise. We're going to talk about the goodness of God. We're going to talk about the faithfulness of God. We will be rooted in praise in this house. We will be rooted in praise. If you're like, I don't know, I'm not sure about all this loud, outspoken stuff. I'm sorry. We ain't going to change. You know what's fun? What's fun? I told you 30 minute closing. Go ahead and stand, so I'll hush. Watching those ball games at the house last night, I watched it back in the kitchen on my phone. The night, last weekend, I was watching it with Barry and Barbara. That was a miracle. We made it out of there and we still loved each other. They're on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> God bless them. But when I'm watching it, the game at home, I, I, I get excited. I yell, I holler, I scream. I know that ref's going to hear me through the TV tube. You know, I want him to hear me, and I know he can if I holler loud enough. And so I get excited in the house, and it's, it's fun, and I, I enjoy watching my pokes. But you know what's really fun? It's when I go to Boone Pickens Stadium, and I join with 60,000-plus other people who feel the same passion that I feel for my pokes. And when I get around them, and they release bullet. And they say, and Larry Reese comes on the intercom, and he, here comes Bullet, and Bullet, the horse runs out, and everyone's, Aah! and then Pistol P comes out, and he fires off a few rounds, and then he, oh, yes, you, cow, and that whole place erupts, and then you'll hear, orange, power, orange, Power. Last night we were yelling, we need more orange <laughs> power. And you go down to Norman, it's the same thing. They roll out that boomer schooner. 
they let it out and they got Boomer and Sooner and all the horses leading the way and they release those guys, well that place erupts. And then you hear the, the guys, I forget what they're called, they're firing the shots down there. You might know Adam, you know what, Roughnecks, that's what it is, Roughnecks. <laughs> and then you hear, Boomer! You see, you guys are, can't even respect the house of God. <laughs> but you hear that and that's going back and forth and being there with other people at the same time, come on, your praise erupts, doesn't it? Your praise erupts because people around you, they have that same, and I've, I very rarely just see people sitting there in the midst of everybody else going crazy. I very rarely just see people sitting there, well, that, that was spectacular, that was awesome. No, we're, oh, you hit some pass, oh, yes, you, you know, yeah! Man, I want that atmosphere in the church. I want to get together. And I know sometimes because of sickness or because of illness or because just circumstances, we're watching through Facebook, and we appreciate all of our Facebook folks watching, and we appreciate you guys, love you guys, and, and we, we appreciate everyone who views, and Man, this past week I heard about a lady from Connecticut who was saved. She gave her heart to Jesus. She was, I believe if I remember right, she was uh, uh, raised outside the church and she was watching one, 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 of our, one of our Facebook posts. And I don't know if it was live or maybe went back and watched it, but she was watching one of our Facebook posts and a lady from Connecticut gave her heart to Jesus because of what this church brought out. I'm so thankful for that. And I'm so thankful for what God, yeah, you can go ahead and put your hands together for that. So we're so thankful for the technology and opportunity we have to keep this live stream going and making sure everyone outside this building can hear the Word of God. It's awesome. But man, there's something better than watching. That's coming and gathering together in this stadium called Elm Grove Community Church. Getting together with one another, shouting amen, shouting hallelujah, and praising God together. I love doing it. I love seeing you guys. I love meeting here. I love praising the Lord with you. We're going to let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. We're going to be a great, great family who celebrates and honors our God. That's one thing. I'm closing. One thing I miss each and every day about being around Pastor Orville. Pastor Orville, he wouldn't even know people were around. It was part of who he was. He wasn't saying it for other people to hear. It was who he was. And you'd hear him, he wouldn't even know you were around, and you'd hear him, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. I can't tell you how many times I heard, thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. And you'd walk in, and thank you, Jesus. Oh, hey, hey, Jared. And I know he wasn't saying it because I was there. He was saying it because that's what, that what was in his heart. Can we become more like that? Can we become a church that when the obstacles hit and trials hit and tests hit, thank you, Jesus, you got this. Thank you, Jesus. Can we be a church that when, 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 when our faith is tested, thank you, Jesus, you got this. I know there were times that he was battling. And I didn't. Now, when, I, when you saw him slap his leg and say, thank you, Jesus, that meant you better take the wheel because he's getting tired. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, pull over, Pastor. I got you. I got you. But can we be more like that? Can, and can we just start right now? Can you just start? If you feel comfortable, if you don't, it's fine. But if you feel comfortable, can you just lift your hands and you just say, thank you, Jesus? Can, you, can, you, can we just praise him? Can we just praise, just praise him in your own way? Don't wait for my words. Come on, right where you're at, let's just praise him. Let's praise him. Praise him. God, you're so faithful. God, you're worthy. God, we honor you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for making me whole. God, thank you, Jesus, for life. And thank you, Jesus, for your love. And thank you, Jesus, for the church family you surround me with. God, thank you, Jesus, for the people who, who are falling in love with you each and every day. God, thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in this house and for the way you're encouraging and the way you're strengthening. God, thank you for the light that you are. God, we thank you for the health that's coming to our community right now. 
We thank you for your hand that's going to extend over Sealing and Chester and Fairview and our communities, God. We're believing for health, God. We're believing for your hand to prosper over us. God, thank you, Jesus. We honor you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you in this house. Come on, sing this with us. Lift your hands and sing it with us. every breath we're going to talk about the goodness of God amen amen we praise his name we praise his name come on say it one more time our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So be it. Let it be done. Amen. 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 Come on, one time in this house. I'm just asking you for one time, then we're going to let you go. Will you just erupt in praise this morning? Come on, will you just erupt? Come on, just erupt in praise. Hallelujah. Yes! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody. Oh! And now I'm kidding. We're so thankful to have you guys here with us this morning. We're family. We're family. It's good. Good to be in God's house. Praise his name. Praise his name. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for our family. Ask your blessing upon them. God, go with them. Lead them. Guide them and direct them. Give us a great night tonight with our community. God, bless everyone who has, a, who has had a hand in making tonight happen. And God, we thank you for it all. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, one, one more time. Give your God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Pastor Barry, will you dismiss us in prayer this morning?